You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. Survivor 46 is here and so is On Fire, the only official Survivor podcast. And we have a twist this season. The winner of Survivor 45, D. Valladares, will be joining us every week. We're going behind the scenes of the biggest moments, the how and the why things happen, and the strategy and analysis you can only get from someone like me, a Survivor winner. Listen to On Fire, the official Survivor podcast, wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Alex Rodriguez. And I'm Jason Kelly. From Bloomberg, this is The Deal. Each week, you will hear us in conversation with business icons. This show will explore deal-making across sports, media, and entertainment. That is a harsh lesson in business. Sports is and not uh, as simple you know, I, as bringing a bunch of big names together. I didn't want to do another stomp you out speech. It opened so, up so many more doors. The show is called The, the deal. deal. Listen to The Deal. Listen to The Deal on Spotify. You, you feel this, this nervousness on the phone there? Sir, I've been trying to make an urgent phone call up there. Well, I don't think it's something I want to do on an overseas phone. You got to make some phone calls. Hang up the phone. Prank caller. Prank caller. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to Packernet After Dark. This is the call-in show of the Packernet Podcast Network. If you'd like to call in, if you'd like to participate in the show, please feel free to do so. The phone number here is 608-501-0718. New callers go directly to the front of the line. And guess what? We have a new caller. New caller, what's going on? Hey, this is first time calling, so just call me um, Pennsylvania Packer fan. Okay. So Rodgers is out, and uh, it looks like he's done for the season. So my question is, what's what's it going to look like for our our draft pick for next year? So... I'm glad that we're done with the deal with Rodgers. No disrespect. Um, I'm just I'm just glad that Jordan Love stepped up and is looking pretty good. So, yeah, you, I'm just curious, Ryan, what, what, what's your aspect on all this? So, go Pack, go. Well, I know they beat Buffalo, and that is a little bit scary, but I think a lot of that had to do with Buffalo just completely imploding. Um they don't have a good quarterback. And so I I, I think we're going to get a relatively early second-round pick. Um, I don't know exactly where that's going to land. However, they had pick 13 last year. And so if we just assume that they have that again, then you're looking at roughly pick 44, which is right around where we picked Luke Musgrave. So I think we could probably lock that in. Um, I don't know where we're going to have our first round pick. Hopefully it'll be later in the first round, but I think it'll be a probably between 10 and 20 would be my guess. Hopefully it's a top 10 situation. In fact, ideally they get the number one pick. I mean, that would just be fantastic. They get the number one pick. They're almost guaranteed to take a quarterback, which means we know the Bears are not going to get it. If they don't take a quarterback, they're complete freaking idiots. It's going to be a heck of a situation as far as the drama is concerned with what's there. You know, I mean, Aaron Rodgers gave his entire heart and soul to this team, but what are they going to do? Not take a quarterback? They have Caleb Williams sitting in their lap and they're like, nah, we're going to go get a tackle to help Aaron Rodgers for one more year. Okay. Ryan, Kyle from Madison. What's up? What is up? It's Victory Monday. I have to say, I underestimated. The I, I thought we were going to win this game. Now, the way that this went down was a fever dream for Packer fans. But I spent about an hour and a half watching, like, Bears post-game. Oh, it was – it was <laughs> I, I could have done it for 10 hours. It was absolutely glorious. Yep. And I'd always go back and watch their, like, last video or two before the game. Oh, so much optimism. And it was always, like – why the Bears will destroy the Packers, you know? And they're all hyped up like some used car, like 1990s used car lot advertisement before. And then, it, you know, you start the video of the post game. It's like, hey, Bears fans, (laughs) so tough one today. (laughs) Oh, just dying. But my favorite thing is, is 
reading through the comments, and really I underestimated how much we dealt our most hated rivals, or at least our longest rivals, an existential blow with that game yesterday. These fans in Chicago have been gaslighting each other. I mean, we know this. You've been calling them on it. But they've been gaslighting each other with hyping up this Bears team. And it's unbelievable. Like, just, it, it is. It's, it's, it's an existential event for them because they all believe. I mean, this was the most expensive ticket in the NFL, starting around 500 bucks. Um, they thought this was it. And none of them know what in the heck to do now. And it's crazy because it's like, first of all, I think the Bears were only down 10 at one point and the fans are booing, which is like, really? Um, but they were so convinced that this was going to be the other way around. And it's just fascinating to watch. And then it, it, it's, you know, people immediately, you know, we're off the Bears. I'm done being a fan. It's crazy. I, I don't know that I've seen anything quite like this. It's probably happened. But just the deep cut, deep cut to the bone that this has done. This, this has got to be right up there with the NFC Championship game. You know, somebody compared it to 2019 because they thought they were on the ascendancy then as well. That was like what, like a six to yeah. nine game or something. The damage that the Packers yeah. just did to our rival to the south is unbelievable, buddy. Enjoy. Talk to you later. Yeah, that's a good point. I think it is probably the next most devastating game for Bears fans after that NFC Championship game because, and I've talked about this before. It that game broke Bears fans. They used to talk all kinds of trash. I mean, they, they they used to say, and they don't really say this anymore, but I remember for a long time, like, this is our year we're going to the Super Bowl. I don't know exactly when that kind of started to die down, but it was it was, it was was a big deal. And that was back when they had just dominant defenses and good running backs. And, you know, you, you could see a path, I guess. But um, after that loss to the Green Bay Packers, that's when it seemed like they just completely lost hope. And to be fair, that's right around the time that we got Aaron Rodgers. So, you know, again, Brett Favre was supposed to be gone and everything's going to be fine. The first year of Aaron Rodgers wasn't necessarily impressive, although you could probably see Rodgers was quite good. 2009 is a heartbreaker because now you know Rodgers is good. And then 2010, it's like, okay, fine, you're good, but we're going to beat you. We're going to win the Super Bowl. It's going to be great. And we destroyed all that in their home turf. And since then, I really didn't hear Bears fans for a long time. I didn't even talk much trash about Bears fans. I spent more time talking trash to Vikings fans. Because Vikings fans were the ones talking about, this is our year, we're going to be so good and all that. Bears fans didn't really do that until they got Justin Fields. And I feel like this game may have finally broke them. Maybe not 100% because they're still believing in Fields. They still think it's just a bad scheme. It's just the offensive line. It's just these things. They refuse to listen. And it's funny because all offseason, they're like, well, stop looking at stats and go watch the tape. Dude, everybody breaking down tape says he sucks. Everybody breaking down tape. Every single person. I've, I've even had Bears fans send me. I'm like, if you want me to watch something, send it to me. I'll watch it. And I had a guy send me, uh, I think it was, uh, I can't remember the guy's name. I'm sure I've told you before, but he sent me one and I looked at it. It was nothing positive about Justin Fields at all. It was all negative. It doesn't matter if it's stats. It doesn't matter if it's tape. The guy's bad at football. So we'll see. We'll see. Maybe there's, there's just this tiny little thread. There's this tiny thread that's left to be broken, and it is a thread that is, we still believe in Justin Fields, and we still believe in Ryan Poles. Like, we, we got a GM. We got a quarterback. We maybe have a head coach. We just got to get some pieces. You know what I mean? Like, there, there's still a thread, but it's just a thread. And if they watch that JT O'Sullivan video, which is, I'm pretty sure everybody in the world has watched it now, aside from Bears fans who are burying their head in the sand, you can't watch any of these breakdowns and unless you just stay in your Bears bubble and say, it's, it's just the scheme, it's just the scheme, it's just the scheme. No, it's not. It's your quarterback, too. It is the scheme, but it's your quarterback, and it's your receivers, and it's all the people that you were hyping up. By the way, that's why you shouldn't believe in your quarterback. That's why you should also be skeptical that you even have a, a GM. And I don't know whose decision it was to bring in Getze, but if that was your head coach, now you got questions about your head coach, aside from the fact that your defense kind of sucks, too. 
You got a defensive head coach and your defense sucks. You have no talent on your team, even though you had the most money of any team in football, and you spent all of it. You've been drafting fairly high and consistently, and I'm not seeing anything get better. So maybe you don't have a quarterback, and maybe you should start questioning whether or not you have a GM. And I don't know about this head coach, because, you know, issues. So they're not there yet, but they are just hanging on by a thread to being just completely broken. And some of them already are. Some of them are just completely broken. Hey, Ryan, it's Aaron from Eau Claire, just still enjoying that win from yesterday. Um, And uh, just thinking about the fact that Bears fans, I mean, they've got to just be devastated right now. Um, And the thing is, I only feel sorry for the ones who saw it coming or never bought into the, the hype to begin with because, you know, the the people who were just convinced that this was going to be, you know, a Bears blowout and Justin Fields was going to be the MB, MVP this year are just kind of relying on a bravado that I don't really know where it ever came from to start with. Um, I understand being hopeful. I think we're we're all hopeful that our teams will take that next step, that our quarterbacks will take the next step. That's how we've all been this summer with Jordan Love. We're just kind of going, you know, is he going to be good? Is he not going to be good? I really hope so. But, you know, for the most part, I, I haven't seen a lot of Packers fans just shoving it down other people's throats like, oh, Jordan Love's going to be the most amazing thing in the world. Like, it's much more common that uh, – I've just seen a lot of people be kind of cautiously optimistic with Jordan Love. And um, with Justin Fields, whatever reason, or this iteration of the Bears or whatever, uh, it's just been such a weird sense of this kind of hyper-confidence that I think they just want it to be true so bad that they convince themselves that it's true. Um, I don't really understand where the national media perspective gets it from when it comes to predicting that the Bears will be that much better this year. Um, I don't know what skin they have in that game, but, I mean, as far as Bears fans are concerned, I think it's, I mean, it's got to be a devastating blow to their egos, especially those who are just trash-talking all summer. And what I have to say to that is, you reap what you sow. Go, Pat, go. It is really weird. Um, I think most fan bases are cautiously optimistic. I mean, Lions fans are a little bit confident, but it's it's a it's a understandable confidence. It's, we believe we can win the North. Well, yeah, I, I think you can too. To be the worst team in football and to just... To, I mean, and again, it, it's everything we've said a thousand times. I've said on this podcast a thousand times... Just as far as like, look, you know, just look at what you did. What What's good? What's good here? You have to know this isn't good. I mean, again, there there is a path to them being good. If, if DJ Moore can be a legit top 20 wide receiver and Mooney can get back to what he was two years ago and Justin Fields takes a step and, you know, maybe you got three out of your five offensive linemen that can be kind of studs, plus Tevin maybe coming back, make it four. Um, you know, and then you've got uh, you've, you've got a good couple running backs. Maybe Komet Com- can be better than he has been. And, I mean, you don't have a defensive line. There's no hope for that. But you got maybe some linebackers if they can pan out. Maybe the corners can take strides. I mean, but again, it's it's like... If if best case scenario for everything, and I don't mean pie in the sky, I mean realistic, it could happen. But again, it's like flipping a coin. Yes, it, it's possible that if you flip a coin, it'll be heads. But if I have 10 coins and say that what I think is going to happen is that all of them will come up heads and I'm confident and I'm arrogant about it, while also simultaneously assuming that every one of those coins for the Packers is going to come up tails, now you're just operating in delusion. It's technically possible, but it's about as as likely as it is that you go out and win the lottery tonight. 
it's not that dramatic, but but it, it, it it's just it's dumb, and it's not rooted in anything factual, and it it really is unusual to the point of, you know, Bears fans love it. A lot of people do, and I think it's stupid. If if you ever can go back and find a tweet where I said cope, then punch me in the face. It's the dumbest crap ever. But they love to say that all the time. Oh, cope, cope, cope. That's kind of what it feels like. This is like a coping mechanism. Nobody is this excited about being this bad. Something is wrong. There, there is a actual mental and emotional problem taking hold here. Um, I, I'm, I'm not going to be able to run it super long, so why don't we take our first quick break. Uh, please remember to check out OldSouthernBBQ.com. Um, shoot, I forgot. I was going to give you some information, and I forgot. But anyways, I did make the chicken wings. Very, very happy with it. I, I was torn because I was making barbecue chicken wings. Obviously, I've got four barbecue sauces. I got to make some barbecue chicken wings. So I got the chicken wings on the Weber, and I was torn. Should I use the barbecue seasoning or the chicken seasoning? And then it kind of became obvious I should use the chicken seasoning. And that was a fantastic decision. Let the barbecue sauce handle the barbecue. Then you put on this chicken, and it, it you know what it reminded me of? I, I One time I worked at Summerfest, my first job ever. I don't know how old I was. Very young. I got a job at Summerfest working at the uh, Turkey Leg Shack. Making these chicken wings with that chicken rub, it's like I got a whiff of it, and it just brought me back to being that you know, fourteen-year-old or however old I was. And I hated it at the time. Like the smell was just weird, and I didn't like it. And I was getting all dirty. I had to haul these boxes of chicken thighs. But I tell you what, I ate one of those chicken thighs, and it was one of the best things ever. And this just reminded me of that. It was such a bold chicken flavor that came through the barbecue chicken wings. So we got one down. It was a success. I'm very, very excited. I'll get you some more information uh, as I test these out a little bit more. But I would absolutely encourage you to uh, to try it. If you have any questions, I had somebody reach out and say, which one is most like Sweet Baby Ray's? Because that's usually what I use. I have not responded, partially because I can't find <laughs> who sent that to me and where but also because I just forgot which one it was. But there's definitely an answer to that question. Anyways, let's take a break. We'll be right back. Hey, U.S. Cellular customers, I've got good news, so don't hit skip forward just yet. I'm talking about their special customer event, Us Days. What's Us Days? It means exclusive offers just for their customers, just to say thanks, like up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. No, I didn't just misread that. That's up to $1,200 off. They must really like you. Us Days at U.S. Cellular, exclusive offers just for you, just to say thanks. Right now, U.S. Cellular customers get up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. Terms apply. I'm Alex Rodriguez. And I'm Jason Kelly. From Bloomberg, this is The Deal. Each week, you will hear us in conversation with business icons. This show will explore deal-making across sports, media, and entertainment. And that is a harsh lesson in business. Sports is and not as uh, simple you know, I, as bringing a bunch of big names together. I didn't want to do another stomp you out speech. It opened so, up so many you know, more doors. The show is called The, the deal. deal. Listen to The Deal. Listen to The Deal on Spotify. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda, you never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, Priceline. Ah, mmm. The first taste of rare bourbon you finally got your hands on. That's nice. At Caskers.com, we make this experience easy. Caskers is a one-stop spirit curator with an impressive selection of exclusive sought-after rare and household names in the realm of premium spirits and champagne. Discover the top flavors of the year now by going to Caskers.com and using code WELCOME10 for $10 off your first purchase. Get $10 off your first purchase with code WELCOME10 at Caskers.com. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I'll tell you what, Ryan. I was not expecting that. I was not expecting. I was not either. Like, I knew the Bears were bad, and I knew that we, you know, we we had a lot going for us. But I also knew we were young, and I kind of thought that this game was going to be a shootout. And about halfway, you know, halftime, I was relatively sure that I was right because it was, it was close. We were kind of struggling a little bit. And... uh 
And then I don't I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. The uh, the Packers got the let out, and yep. they just started just kicking, just just. <laughs> Out of the Bears, and they're so, so bummed out today. I, I just, I, I got a couple of Bears fans, um, you know, I'm kind of friends with, and I, I don't even want to, I don't even want to like throw the jab, yeah, you know. I haven't done that. Really it seems either. mean, but I, you know, I got to pull my receipts from the toxic ones, yes. so, you know, the ones who aren't nice about things, right? So you know, you know, leave some of the guys alone if they if they've been nice about things, but exactly. Hey, send me, uh, send me some names. Um, I am totally fine getting banned from Twitter uh, for for this. So send me some names. I probably sent uh, Justin Jones and Adam Shine. Yeah, probably ten uh, ten messages and ten different texts each. So uh, yeah, I'm already being real toxic, and I'm fine with it. So go back. Oh, I think Clayton got blocked by Adam Shine, if I'm not mistaken. Somebody did. I think it was Clayton. But um, yeah, I I I don't know. I don't I don't want to get too carried away with the. I mean, I'm I'm fine trashing the Bears, and I agree. There there are some cool guys that I. It is funny, and I I almost feel bad because I throw out like general jabs, like oh by the way, Bears suck, not like directly at somebody for their receipts or anything. But there are some. Let's just say I don't get a lot of responses anymore. There there was a handful of people that always were were commenting, always, always, always. They're not there. So um, and I even check because sometimes a lot of these guys I have muted, and I'm looking through them like, do I see any mutes? I don't see any mutes. They're gone. They're not showing up. These guys would not ever not comment. So, um, you know, some of them, it's like, good, I muted you for a reason. I don't want you here, you freaking moron. But then there's a couple that were really cool, and it's kind of like, eh, I mean, there was one guy, actually, that, that did comment a couple times, and he was he was cool about it. He's a pretty good guy. So I, I really didn't care for him at first, but we kind of figured it out. Um, But, yeah, I kind of feel bad where it's like, there's there's a couple where it's like come back around me. I'm I'm not gonna come at you. I promise. Like as long as you don't run your mouth. If you're gonna run your mouth, like oh Jordan didn't even look that good. Okay, now we're gonna have problems. But if you want to just come back into the fold, we can hang out. We can say good game. You know, I thought Fields actually looked pretty good, all things considered. You know, and we'll just we'll just play nice, and that's fine with me. So yeah, I'm kind of on the same wave, wavelength with you there. But but as far as like pumping up Adam Shine and all that. I'm a little bit more hesitant because this one game from Jordan Love, he didn't grade out very well, and everybody hates PFF for it because they think he should have, but I understand it. Um, as as somebody else said, they grade process, not results, and, and you could argue that the process wasn't super great for Jordan Love, especially on a consistency scale, which, as I've said, is more or less what PFF is, and he missed a ton of throws early and then he made a ton of throws later and it averaged out to be an about average. So I understand where they're coming from. And I also understand why fans, if they did, if we did a fan grading scale, Justin Fields would be a 20 and Jordan love would be an 80. I actually did that before, uh, made a, tried to make like a fan scale. I might try that again. I, I keep saying I need to do it and the days keep flying by and I just, I'm not doing anything that I say I'm going to do. I haven't even watched the game back spending so much time stitching together all these laughing at the enemy stuff. Anyways, Nate, what else you got, man? Hey, Ryan, say it again. Um, I had to call in with a message for Bears fans, and I hope that there's at least one listening out there right now. Okay. You guys ran your mouth all, all off season, and it wasn't even like the normal off season. Granted, you guys normally talk with nothing to prove for it, but you were bottom of the league last year, and then you, well, you add a couple linebackers, and you you bring in like pieces that just mean nothing. They mean nothing. They mean literally nothing in the modern NFL. And you're going to run your mouths all off season just like... Oh, Nate, no, no, no. You don't understand. In this scheme, linebackers are the most important thing. I know that every piece of data in existence will tell you that linebackers are the least important uh, person on a football field. But um, no, no, you don't understand. In this scheme... Reality ceases to exist, and linebackers are actually one of the more important pieces. You did. And what happened? What happened? You want to recap? I'd be happy to give you play-by-play of what happened week one, uh, but I'm pretty sure you're beating yourself up about it. Enough right now, so I'll hold off. But, um, you know, Bears, I'm going to give you this Going to give you this season to figure things out here and uh, and learn your place, which is not above the Packers. We will always be better than you. 
keep that in mind and remember that. <laughs> and don't <laughs> run your mouths next year, all right? Because uh, you run your mouths again like that and come out and just play like <laughs> you're going to become the new Cowboys. Yeah. You want to be a Cowboys fan? Or you, you talk <laughs> all year and then, uh, you know, best case scenario, you make the playoffs and week one exit. Don't be them. Don't be them. Be better. Go back go. I'll be honest, despite the fact that we beat Dallas all the time, um, that would still be a major improvement if they became Dallas. I mean, to be to be completely honest, maybe they do want to be Dallas because that, I mean, they would they would win games and stuff, you know. But we're talking like potential playoffs. It's it's legit. I mean, not Super Bowl, but playoffs. Hey, back to this draft hobbyist here. Um, I was pretty happy with the game. Gotta say. And there are a couple things I wanted to touch on. Um, number one, as I was in that chat, that would definitely not be an illegal stream online. So there's fans of all teams. And all I saw was how trash the floor was and how he's going to get ex- Sorry about this, by the way. I'm, I'm on the fence of cutting it, but I think I can kind of make out what he's saying. So we're going to try to gut it out. Oh, so, you know what? Yeah, we saw what offense LeFleur can design. It was it, 38 points. Yep. What do you have to say now? There it is. Another guy that needs to be touched on is uh, Carlson. Yeah. All right, we got we got, <laughs> we got to cut it off there, man. But, uh, no, I mean, listen, in that robotic uh, mess of a phone call, which feel free to call back in, not from, you know, in in the depths of the Atlantic Ocean. Reminds me of Mario when you're swimming around in there. Do, 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 do. You know what I mean? But I, I listen, I, I think Matt LaFleur, it's just one week, but I think he's putting himself on the map a little bit. I mean, we're starting to see a little bit of that Shanahan-iness or, or the, the McVay-ness where McVay, I mean, he took a quarterback in golf that was no good, and suddenly you got the scheme, you got a couple players, and that offense was unstoppable. Kyle Shanahan, he doesn't really have quarterbacks, but he's got a couple pieces, and he's got a scheme that works, and he can make it work. You're starting to see that with Matt LaFleur, right? It shouldn't work. Your number one wide receiver is out. Your quarterback has never really started before. You've got you know, Romeo Dobbs on a pitch count, who's your number two wide receiver. Jaden Reed is a rookie. He's never played in the NFL before. Luke Musgrave is a rookie who's never played before. And you hang 38 points in week one against a division rival on the road? I mean, I, I get all the jokes the Bears suck, and they do. They sucked last year, too, and we didn't hang 38 on them. In fact, only two teams did. Detroit put up 41, which we should have had if we did just kicked the field goal. Dallas put up 49. That's it. The Miami Dolphins didn't do it. The Buffalo Bills didn't do it. Detroit the second time around didn't do it. The Vikings never did it. The Packers last year never did it. We put up 28 and 27 on them. And that was with a slow first half. 49ers only put up 10. Granted, that was Trey Lance in in the rain and all that, but that's still a heck of an accomplishment. What do you do if you have a good offense? You're going up against a bad defense. You hang 30 on them. Detroit had a great offense. They did it twice. Buffalo has a great offense. They did it. Miami had a great offense. They did it. Packers, I don't know, but every team that put 30 on them last year, well, the Jets also did. I was going to say every team had a good offense, but I don't know about the Jets so much. 31-10 against the Jets, that is that is freaking glorious. My goodness. <laughs> freaking Bears. I am in love with that organization. I really am. Also, as you said, Anders Carlson, fantastic. You know, I mean, no question I was riding them. And I had mentioned it's going to be rocky, and I still think it will be. Of course it is. If it was Mason Crosby, he'd miss a couple, right? And there'd be there'd be issues. Probably going to be a little bit more with Anders Carlson, but, I mean, for him to come out and be clutch, Jordan, it's going to be rocky. But you know what? He showed up when it mattered and, and pulled through. So I'm pumped, man. I'm excited. You're right. This is Aaron. Give you another callback. I'm going to hey. try to make this one quick because I've got, like, four points, and I'm going to just burn through them. All right. Okay. First of all, um, I want to talk about a couple clips. I want to talk about the Kurt Benkert reacting to the first Romeo Dobbs touchdown um, because that was awesome. Everyone's favorite backup quarterback. He basically was like, whoa, what of that play? And then he just like threw it. Like he was talking about his points in the pocket and then his how he stepped up in the pocket and then he just threw his hands up and was like, 
mm, I don't know. I don't know. And it's just like his face said everything, and it was ugh, gold. Um, and then there's obviously the Rashawn clip of reacting after the game, of like at the post game interview with Aaron oh, Andrews. Yeah. Normally, when you get players that come up behind them, they like grab the players and be like, yeah, 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 let's get all hype. And like they're just that goofy whatever, in general, yeah. Super happy. Rashawn Gary was on the verge of tears. Yeah. Hyping him up. And was saying, do not play with this man. Do not play with Jordan Love. Do not play with him. And he was just, he gave Aaron Andrews chills. He gave all of us chills. Yep. And it's just, that's what this team is. It's- well, and, and how much they support Jordan. I know uh, Clayton had posted a clip when we did our, our live stream together. Um, posted a clip of Jordan going down out of bounds. And, I mean, it wasn't just the people immediately around who ran over and, and picked him up. Dude, people came from all over. You saw four, five, six guys come running in the screen. Just Josiah DeGuara came running in the screen to help pick up Jordan. He didn't have to do that. There's guys over there. He doesn't need his help. Lucas Van Ness was sitting on the bench. He came flying off the bench to come help and pick him up. This team supports this quarterback like I've never seen a team support a quarterback before. They have got his back. It's just, I mean, I, I got chills right now just talking about it. It's really, really, really unbelievable. It's really inspiring. And this is what I've been talking about this whole off season. About just, you know, last year, the dynamics of the locker room were not good. Couldn't quite put my finger on it. I don't want to just say it's all Aaron Rodgers' fault because I, I don't think it's just like everybody hated Rodgers. It's just, it was just a different culture. And the guys, for whatever reason, they just didn't really rally around Rodgers the way they rally around Jordan. You know, I mean, he has his group of friends, and his friends love him. And obviously, everybody in the locker room respects him. But there just wasn't this kind of a culture. And th- there is now. And I, I've, I'm, I, you know, I perhaps things like this have existed in Green Bay numerous times. I'm, I'm sure there have been some some great locker rooms, probably when Rodgers first started. Um, I'm sure there have been several with, with uh, Brett and, and even going back further. But to my recollection... Nothing like this. I, I, I've told you before, um, I saved a clip of a of a newspaper clipping about how the wide receivers went to Jordy's ranch to go hang out with him. And I thought that was so cool that they like did that together. That was like a big deal to me because I wasn't accustomed to that. I thought it was so cool we had this like group of guys that got along. Similar, but not on this level. This is on a different level. Everything that the Lions wish they could have been last season or that's where they had the belief. We have that belief now, and yeah. we have the talent. Yeah, well said. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Yeah. Um, so next point is the my favorite pass from Jordan Love was actually incomplete. Um, it was the deep pass in, to Jaden Reed in double coverage. If that ball was anywhere else, it's picked. Yeah. It was right on Jaden Reed's hands. Sure, it was incomplete. It was broken up, but... If Jaden Reed can make that catch, look out. Yep. I think if you if I were to put together like a top ten list of my favorite Jordan Love throws, at least half of them are incomplete. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Stop talking about how Jordan Love can't throw the deep ball because that was pinpoint accurate on the money. And yes, um, and I honestly I forgot my last point. I always that I was that. going to talk about. I. I need to stop saying like two things or three things real quick because if I can even remember the second one, there's no way I'm ever going to remember the third one unless I, I got to start writing them down or something. With one minute left, so I'm going faster than I thought. Um, <laughs> let me try to scour my brain real quick. Um, you got oh, this. Um, oh, that's right. Um, so the Bears can do whatever what David Wallace's vacuum was. And the Bears fans can take out their suck it and suck it and suck it. <laughs> okay, anyways, sorry. I didn't want to get intensely singing it at work. Um, so, but anyway, oh, the last point that I was actually trying to make. Um, major shout out to Justin Fields for getting Jordan Love's mom those tickets. Yeah, that was cool. That shows everything that the guy is about. And again, we've all said this before, and I will say it a thousand times. Justin Fields legitimately seems like a very good dude. He really does. Like, he went to the podium afterwards. He took the full blame. He said, this is on me. I was playing not... I, I'm not playing well enough. I need to trust my guys. I got, you know... And and to be fair, he's wrong. I I mean, I... I'm, I'm not... 
I'll be completely honest. I genuinely think he he was bad. He he really was. He made a lot of mistakes. I I think if you clean up everything else around him, I think there's a chance that you walk away with a very different perspective of Justin Fields. I think there's a chance that I walk away from this game going, man, he might have taken a step. Because some of those plays he did make, and there weren't very many, are when he's you know breaking the pocket, nobody can bring him down, and then he throws a pretty decent pass to a guy that's open on these scramble drills. Um, I was getting nervous early. I really was. I was watching him like, man, he's he's not doing anything wrong from what I can tell. I mean, maybe he's missing throws down the field. I can't see. But um, I, I, I thought he looked like he was potentially going to do something. But um, anyways, no, I, I again, I, I think he's a good dude. And, and it's just another guy that likes Jordan Love, by the way. Not only does our team rally around him, but Justin Fields and, and the Bears guys actually like him too. Um, no, but I know they're really good friends. And uh, again, Justin really does seem like a good guy. It's too bad he's a big... I, I wish Justin had gotten drafted by a different team and was successful. I genuinely do. I wish he was successful. I don't like anybody necessarily to fail. I have to root against some of these guys if if they are on opposing teams or whatever. Like this week, I'm a, I'm I am not a Bijan fan. This week, I loved him in college. I'm probably gonna love watching him for many years to come. This week, can't stand him. Guy's a friggin' loser. That's how it goes, man. But no, he he seems like a good dude. He's a competitor, but a true sportsman. So major shout out to Mr. Fields. I hope he can get a career going somewhere else other than Chicago and actually be good at some point. Um, so major shout out to Justin Fields. And it's actually really hard to not mix up Jordan Love and Justin Fields. Yes, so thank you. Have a good day. I'm glad Bye. I'm not the only one. It's funny because some people pick pick fun at me about that. Like you keep mixing them up, but I've I've heard seventy people do that. Like everybody does that, and I don't know why. It's very very weird. So I know I'm not alone in that. Why don't we take our final break? We'll be right back. Breaking news. The Bears have announced a new sponsor uh, for their practice jerseys to wear a patch on uh, the days that they have practice and scrimmages. Uh, The name, Pepsi Trash Bags. (laughs) Very fitting. I'm out. Yeah. I think that works. Empty trash bags. That works. I was thinking Preparation H, but yeah, whatever. Hey, Ryan, it's Craig from Indiana. Hey, Craig. Uh, it's uh, Monday after the uh, trouncing of the Bears. Yes. What an awesome game. I know not perfect, but I'm, uh, we talked about it. I'm so nervous nervous going into it. And uh, Very just nervous. to have a performance like that was great. Um, I do know one thing that people are saying is, hey, it's the Bears. They're not very good. But it just seems like over the last, I don't know, several years, we often played down to our competition. Yes. Right? Even at, even sometimes with those 13-3 and three wins, it just felt like, I can't believe this game is so close. Yeah. I can't believe we're not blowing this team away at this point. And it, we might barely win. Sometimes we would lose. But um, so I, to me, even though they're the Bears, uh, it, it was it – was, we beat them up, um, and I, I just am excited if, if uh, more of that happens this season that it's not like we're letting these guys hang around. Um, and that could have happened yesterday, right? Um, so um, hopefully, again, that's uh, that's a new tone for the team. All right, go back, go. Oh, I'm going to try my new barbecue sauce yes. from uh, Old Southern t- uh, tonight, too, on some uh, pulled pork. Oh, I'll let perfect. you know what I think. Take care. Bye. Yeah, I, that was the first thing I had. I mean, I... I... I had the pulled pork first, and then the barbecue came later. But it's nice because I got just a ton of leftover pulled pork, and then you can just try different barbecue sauces each time. But um, no, it's it's fantastic stuff. Um, but that is kind of similar, or, or it, it's what I was talking about before, where it's like we have to learn this team. You know, with Aaron Rodgers, there was always just a thing. You just know how things go generally. You know, from a macro view, obviously, obviously every game is different. But you're right. I mean, it, the the amount of heart attacks. That's where, like, Packer fans got excited about all gas, no break. Why? Because we were tired of taking our foot off the gas pedal, and then it seemed like we did it anyways, despite the fancy slogan. You know, you get up 14 nothing. it's like, dude, this is going to be a trouncing. And then they score. It's like, oh, shoot, it's only a one-score game. Like, I, I forgot. Like, that can close pretty quick. And then you go three and out, and it's like, okay, all right. So now why do I feel like we're losing? Why do I feel like we're losing this game? Cricket? 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 
Oh, my goodness. I'm not asking you to respond. I'm asking you to be quiet. Okay. She doesn't like you, bro. You can't cricket good enough. Okay? She isn't interested. I'm... Okay. Do you even cricket, bro? There's there's nobody... I mean, the, I don't know who you're talking to. You're alone in my office. There's no female crickets in here. Okay? It's just you hanging out, ticking me off. I'm sorry. I just... I... I yeah. But yeah, you're you're right. It It very rarely went that way. It always seemed to culminate into... Either we have to get that final winning drive, or we have to get this final stop. Like, every game, it felt like it came down to that. And that's part of what made this game fun, because I'm sorry. I know some people are like, oh, I like close games. I like competitive games. I don't. If 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 every game was 45 to nothing, well, maybe not every game, but if, if games are 45 to nothing, I will enjoy the living crap out of that game. You think for one second I'm not going to enjoy that? I'm going to get more excited every single touchdown and every single stop. It just gets better every time. So, I mean, it's too early to to detect any patterns or whatever or to even dissect why certain teams have certain DNAs. I mean, look look at the Falcons. I mean, not, not necessarily now, but historically. I mean, have you ever seen anything like that where they'll run up a score 28 nothing and just end up losing the game? Like every week? <laughs> it was the same thing every week. They're winning, they're winning, they're winning, they're winning. Oh, they lost. But that's just, I mean, it just has something to do with your mentality, with your talent, with, I I don't know. It's just the way you're constructed. You just kind of have a certain way of doing things, and that's just the way it was for the Packers. We, as you said, played down to our competition. There was never a game where it was like, oh, we're going to smoke these guys. I mean, we would say that, but it just didn't seem to happen. And I honestly think that was part of the reason nobody respected the Packers. You know, we we didn't blow people out of the water we won 13 games but it wasn't we didn't win the way buffalo wins we don't win the way the kansas city chiefs win and then you know and that's why even stat people will be like you know if you look at your point differential you're not really up there because you know you win a lot of games so obviously you're going to have a high point differential because you're not going to have a lot of negatives and we didn't usually get blown out either but if we're 13 and well let's say 13 and 3 and buffalo is also 13 and 3 or even 12 and 4 I know it's different now, but going back to when we were several years ago or whatever, and they're blowing people out 10, 15 points, and we're winning by a, a game-winning field goal, like the year we beat Detroit twice and never once had a lead. I mean, that's like classic Packers, at least for a while. I don't know when that started, 2017-ish, 2016-ish or something. Because I know in you know 2011, obviously, we were blowing people out of the water, but it, it started to dissipate at some point. So I, I would absolutely love it if we have less heart attacks. I, I really would. Packernet, what's going on, everybody? What's up? Happy Victory Monday. Just sitting here going through Bears Twitter, listening <laughs> to all the Bears podcasts, probably listening to more Bears podcasts than I did Packers podcasts. Yeah. Man, that was nice. Um, just seeing Molly and Hall just rolling in the pig crap. I mean, it is just quite nice. Uh, this is actually the reason I called, though. I got curious. Looked up Pat Mahomes' first game, and I know, I know, I'm not comparing Jordan Love to Pat Mahomes. Jordan Love, first game, 15 of 27, three touchdowns. Patrick Mahomes' first game, 15 of 27, four touchdowns. Wow. Passer rating's basically identical. Um, no picks. It's kind of funny. Uh, go Pack. Yeah, that was sweet, man. Go Pack. That's pretty cool. It's a cool little tidbit, especially since, let's be honest, that's always been. You know, not like a, a a traditional comp where it's like he's like this guy, but sort of a he's a Pat Mahomes light kind of thing. I kind of like it. I like it. I like that he started off that way. Especially, it's a great trolling comment too. You know, where it's like I don't necessarily believe he's Pat Mahomes, but I can put the stats side by side and just tick a lot of people off. So I'll probably just do that. Happy Big Monday, Ryan. What's up? Yeah, I'm uh, sitting here at work. I popped on. Uh... Of course, I listened to you to start the day. And Thank that you. was fun listening to everybody be so excited and, and all the fun that everybody got to have, and laughing at the Bears and all that good stuff. <laughs> um, but uh, sitting here listening to what Coward was going to say, and my goodness, man, this this guy, he can just turn coat so fast. And he still covers himself, you know, to a degree, but he just flips right over. You know, Jordan Love now, according to Colin, has had a great tutor 
and he's a solid quarterback with all the security and stuff oh, around geez. him. And, you know, he might not be the next but he looks like he's going to be good. And Justin Fields, well, he's got all these problems. And Justin Fields can't do this, and he can't do that, and he can't see the field, and he's too frenetic. But he still got a lot of talent. You know, he's really physically talented. He got all the talent. But, you know, he's not really a good quarterback. It just drives me nuts. And I know I haven't had a chance to go listen to anybody, you know, the rest of them, because, again, I was listening to us celebrate our, our win over the Bears first. But I got a feeling this is just what it's going to be across the league. Everybody's going to start backpedaling, and they're all going to pretend like they never spent three, four, five months, you know, really, let's be honest, going back even in the last year, two and three years talking about how this guy isn't going to be any good and it was a waste to pick. And now, oh, well, you know, great tutor, and he's learned so much. And the coach, you know, the floor is doing so much to help him. And it's just, it's just going to be, there's a certain amount of vindication to it and a certain amount of justification why, especially a guy like Colin Coward, is just a tool. You know, I, and again, I only listen to him because I want to hear what the idiots are thinking on the other side and, and where they're getting their information from. But, man, let's let's get on to next week. I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing what the, the numbers are when they come in. I'd like to hear how good everybody did and, and where the strengths and weaknesses are. I got to watch a little bit of the highlights of the game last night, so I got to see some of those things. By the way, Lucas Venez, I was so impressed when uh, – when, um, Justin Fields got flushed out to his right, yep. and Venice came out after him. And granted, you know, Justin Fields had a little longer distance run, but as far as I could see, it looked to me like Lucas Van Ness ran him down to the sideline, yep. caught him, and tackled him before he could get anywhere. So I'm thinking that guy is just going to be a stud because if Justin Fields is some physical phenom and Lucas Van Ness could catch him and run him down out of the backfield, we got a monster. So. All right, man, I'm going to let it go. My time's about up. Go, Pat, go. Let's get on to the Falcons. Yeah, I think I, I feel like I saw the Colin Coward. That Somebody had posted it. I didn't, like, sit down and deliberately listen. I am interested on uh, kind of what these guys are saying. I'm, I'm a bit more focused on, obviously, Bears fans melting down and whatnot. But we'll, we'll circle back around to that. There's currently more content that needs to be covered than there are days in order to cover it because we also really need to quickly start turning our attention to the upcoming games you know we got thursday game tomorrow uh which is an important one with the minnesota vikings we got uh start focusing on the atlanta falcons and all that stuff so too much to do but a fantastic game and yeah lucas van ness you know and again for pretty much everybody i'm sure there were a lot of mistakes like for everybody and i'm sure we're gonna start to see him even the guys you know, Wooden and Brooks. I, 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 I'm positive these guys are going to be making some big mistakes along the way somewhere, but I'm still excited about them. And Devontae Wyatt's going to be making mistakes, but that guy's a freaking animal, man. I'm just, I mean, even last year, it's like you got to wait a little bit longer for him to do something. You know, it's like bad play, bad play, bad play. Like, yeah, this guy's not doing anything. And then he does something. And it's like, what the heck was that? Like, he just throws people. There were two people in this game that were able to hunt down Justin Fields and bring him down and whip him down like a rag doll, and it was Lucas Van Van Ness and Devontae Wyatt. I know by the time Justin Fields saw Wyatt, it was pretty much over anyways, but that's some serious speed from Devontae Wyatt to be able to close like that and just bring him down. Um, I'm, I'm just excited, man. We got so many hunters on that defensive line. These guys just get after it. I'm a little... I mean, I'm I'm not a film guy. I don't understand any of this stuff. Clayton made a, a comment the other day that I was going to ask him about it, but I just kept it to myself. I'm like, I, I got to contemplate this. It was, it was like a run stunt. And I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> the heck? It seems like the opposite of what I'd want to do if I thought they were running is to stunt. But I'm sure there's all kinds of reasons for it. But it's just cool to see, you know? As much as it makes me nervous, we have so much athleticism up front. We got guys that can move like no other defensive line. I mean, there's there's some good defensive lines, and there's some powerful people. And I know we're trying to build something similar to the Philadelphia Eagles, but I think we're leaning more toward athleticism a little bit than they are. I mean, it's a similar build, but I think they're a little bigger and stronger, and we got a little bit more smaller, leaner, and a lot faster. And they're taking advantage of that. I mean, we got guys coming from, you know, the right defensive tackle slot all the way around, hooking around the left side and coming in. Now, my my skepticism, I saw one play, and I'm like, I, I got to time this. It, it took him three seconds to do that. He got to fields, but it's like, okay, but... It's not something you want to do generally because quarterbacks get rid of the ball too fast. But anyway, I, we don't need to get into the, the merits of doing it. I, I just, I love these guys, man. I love watching them work. 
so talented, so gifted, and we, we've had some bad teams, man, and it, you know, I still don't know what this team is going to be. I shouldn't say we've had some bad teams. That's that's over-dramatizing, but you know what I mean. We've had some bad players. You know, I, I remember when Mike Daniels was the only guy on our defensive line. Like, that was it, and he's not a superstar. He was a good football player, but he's not like Nick Bosa, like the best in football. He was just a solid, good guy on the inside, run and pass rush, but that was it. I remember we had no corners, no safeties, no linebackers, trash. No offense to Demarius Randall. <laughs> Way worse than the situation we're in with some questionable safeties. Way worse. I remember we had no running backs. Like Starks popped up and it was like, dude, this guy can actually like get more than three yards. That's crazy. And that was like, that was, you know, about as good as it got. And then it, even that was kind of whatever. And then Eddie, Eddie Lacy came along. It's like, what? This guy's like decent. Like not top 10 or anything, but he's so good. We are just spoiled right now with the amount of talent that we have. Yeah, maybe we missed the playoffs. I have no idea, but I'm 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 going to enjoy watching this team. I'm going to enjoy watching Devontae Wyatt throw people around with Brooks and Wooden flying around and Lucas Van Ness just throwing people and Rashawn Gary just destroying everything in his freaking path and Jair just talking that talk and Razul out there just laying people out and Quay and Devondre and Aaron Jones. In this offensive line, I just I'm I'm ready for it, man. Maybe we lose to the Falcons. I don't know, but we're still going to see our guys play. I'm excited about it. Be careful what you wish for, because you just might get it. Oh boy, Aaron. I hope you're okay, buddy. Go pack, go. Yeah, yeah, that sucked. The whole thing with Aaron Rodgers. I'm still uh. I don't know. He, I saw he put a post on Instagram, essentially alluding to the fact that he'll be back, and that's cool. I mean, it's, it's cool from the standpoint of, like I said, my my concern primarily would be just how devastating that would be to him and his ability to be able to bounce back. When you think about how long of a road it's going to be and how much work you put in it with no payoff, and it's like now I got to put in all this work for rehab, and um, then I got to put in all that off season work again just so that we can come back here again and hopefully not have as bad of an offensive line again so that we can maybe try again if my body holds up. And I, and I think that's a serious question as well. His his ability to want to is great. What is his actual ability to bounce back from a major injury um, at his age? I I don't know. I don't know. I think I'm I'm like most people where I I, I want him to do it because that's such a stupid way to go out. That's really dumb, especially seeing that they beat the 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 Buffalo Bills and everything. I watched that game just the, the whole time. I'm just thinking, man, if Rodgers, I mean, I don't know if Rodgers have been any good. I mean, it, let's be honest, it wasn't a great start, and there, I, I think it's debatable whether he was going to really tear up the league. But if he was with Garrett and these guys, and they did figure it out, and they did start to get into a rhythm with that defense, which looks like it's going to be very promising. It's just it's just stupid that it ended the way that it did. Because, I, I mean, the playoffs are almost a certainty. How far do they get, I have no idea. But And 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 the drama, if we had gotten to the playoffs, because you know that everybody would be talking about it, even though the odds are astronomical, because the Jets wouldn't be the favorites, and we wouldn't be the favorites. But everybody would be talking about how the world wants to see the Jets and the Packers in the Super Bowl. All right, Jersey Mike, one more call. Take us out of here. I freaking hate the Jets. All right. By, by the way, this is Jersey Mike. Hey, Jersey Hi, Ryan. Mike. Um, I hate the Jets. What the heck? What? Why? 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 Okay, here, here's my honest question. Why did uh, Gutekunst not put in an injury compensation um, clause into his uh, the trade? If you can't sustain an offensive line and Aaron Rodgers is under pressure every single down, yeah, automatic first round pick. Like they, they, they should have put like a pressure rate clause or something in there. Yeah. <laughs> um. It. it uh, and then the, the audacity from Rodgers. I mean, to, to, in the pregame video. He's saying, we, we expect to compete for a Super Bowl. That's why I'm here. 
goes on the ground with a knee injury. Screw you, bro. Like, he, he, he does the most to screw the Packers. Honestly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he took that pay cut to spit in our faces. He, he goes down with that injury to spit in our faces. Uh, I, I, that, that injury, he manifested that. You're talking about manifesting things, right? He manifested that injury. Because he just wants to screw us. Screw you, Rodgers. I, screw you, Jets. Uh, I, I, I don't even know what else to say. I, I, you know what? I do know what to say. I'm so elated that we have Jordan Love. Oh, thank God we no longer have to deal with this debauchery. This is this is just straight dog doo-doo. Honestly, the best you can hope for right now is that he's down for the season and that Zach Wilson comes in and looks like, and, uh, you know, we uh, we get we get a number 33 pick. And that's uh, that's all she wrote because uh, Aaron Rodgers is hot garbage. <laughs> yeah, go back, go. All right. Well, that's a different, that's a different approach. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, we're still rooting against the Jets, and I guess now we don't have to have the controversy of, you know, whether that's appropriate because Rodgers is there. Should you? No, Rodgers isn't there. I mean, he is, but not really. So th- at this point, if you're rooting for the Jets, then you genuinely need to go uh, be a Jets fan. Um, but you're rooting against the Jets, and you hope that you get a relatively decent pick. And as much as it's disappointing, again, second round picks are valuable, very valuable. Christian Watson was a second round pick. Devontae Adams is a second round pick. Luke Musgrave, second round pick. Jaden Reed, second round pick. Elton Jenkins, second round pick. Like it's it's a it's a good thing to have two of those. I mean, I, I I'd, I'd take another Lucas Van Ness and Rashawn Gary if at all possible. Jair Alexander, you know. But I think we do fairly well, um, depending on your opinion of uh, Josh Myers and AJ Dillon. It's a fan. It's it's somewhere between fantastic and really good. I'm not even sure which one of those is better, but it's, it's a small margin either way. Anyways, I got to get out of here. You guys have a good rest of your night. I will talk to you tomorrow. Have a good one. Bye bye. <laughs>